Hi A-level sociologists, um, welcome to this lecture looking at Merton's strain theory, um, which is a strand of the functionalist view of crime. Um, again, this is one of those funny lectures where I've had to convert it for home learning. Um, so let's just get started. Uh, strain is what happens when individuals can't achieve the societal goals, okay? Um, their opportunities are effectively blocked, okay? So they're not able to achieve what they've been socialized to believe that they should achieve. And that can lead to what's called strain, okay, which is Merton's key theory, strain. And he argued that when strain occurs, individuals can end up suffering anomie, okay, because they don't feel part of the wider society or they feel disconnected from the goals. Um, or they'll just suffer anomie and commit crime because they don't care about the legitimate means, okay, and that can lead to crime or deviance. But I'll talk to you about that in a second. So what I normally do in class is sit down and think, right, Kate, okay, what goals does everyone share? And I'd get you to have some sticky notes and I'd say, hey, write down what things are really important to you, what are your goals? Uh, and over the years, these are the common themes that have popped up, okay? Um, so quite often um, I will have family, okay? Lots of, um, lots of you value family. It's a key goal to have a family one day, perhaps. Um, most of you will hopefully value educational success because you know you're studying your a-levels most of you might be thinking well actually no i want to go on to uni or i want to use my a-levels to get a really good job um, and yet hopefully lots of you have the goal of having a job and a good job a job that you enjoy okay um hope most of you probably don't want to end up stacking shelves and many of you might want a job that's interesting okay um, and, you know, if you're being honest, I'm fairly certain most of you will value some of the more material things in life, whether it's getting a nice car, a uh, nice phone, um, nice fashionable clothing, like jumpers and sunglasses or what have you. Um, or, you know, just having that money to spend on socialising with friends uh, or, or whoever. OK, these are things that generally we all share. And it's not surprising we all share these goals um, because we are all um, socialised by the agents of socialisation to share the same goals. It's really important as part of our socialisation from our family, education, the media. All these agencies want us to share the same goals. Now, it's really important in society that we do all share similar goals. They won't be exactly the same, but we all need to be kind of heading in the same direction because when... Uh, that breaks down and not everyone does share the same goals, um, you start to see society dysfunction. Uh, so the best example I can give you of that is I'm sure you can remember a lesson that you've been sat in uh, where maybe one or two people in the class do not want to do well, they start misbehaving. What happens to your experience in that lesson? Does that lesson run well? Do you learn? Does everyone in the class benefit? Or does the whole lesson stop functioning because an individual or two have actually decided they, they reject the goal of educational success and they, they're not bothered about working hard? Now, imagine that happened on a societal level if um, nobody valued hard work, nobody valued getting a good job, you know, the economy would stop working, let's face it, so things would start to go wrong. Um, so then I'd like you all to just reflect, um, how do you think you would feel if you didn't reach your goals? So where you guys are at your time in your life, like one of your key goals is actually educational success. Probably, well, I'd like to think you're doing it for the sake of learning, but many of you probably are doing it because you've got that kind of plan in head, like you need this to get to the next stage of the job and the material success. So yeah, let's think next summer um, or whenever it might be, how might you feel if your grades are just awful? You've completely tanked it. You can't get that job. You can't get to uni. Okay, your options are gone. Your opportunities are blocked. How would you actually feel? Okay, how would you feel? And I guess what I'm trying to get at is that that feeling that you'd have then, that kind of anger, that that sadness, that devastation, possibly. That's, pro that's you suffering a bit of strain, okay? Particularly if most others are able to achieve their goals around you, you'll probably feel like you don't belong or you'll feel different or you'll, you know, you'll feel embarrassed, I guess, okay? And that, that's kind of what Merton's getting at, that sense of strain. And then what would you do then if you did fail, okay? Um, what would you do then? Um, and I'm wondering if any of you would respond hopefully not criminally, but possibly a little bit deviantly, like, you know, you might decide to drink quite heavily. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. Drink very heavily, maybe over a number of days, maybe develop a drinking problem, possibly. Um, and now that is a response uh, to strain, okay? That's what's known as uh, Merton's re re 
retreatism sorry when you retreat from the goal of trying hard and working to get what you want and you can end up you know drinking heavily maybe even taking drugs because you just can't cope with the fact that you know you haven't reached your goals that's a type of um, deviant response to strain or obviously criminal if you take drugs as well or you know maybe you would just try again okay you maybe you you would work really hard you try again and maybe you would succeed and that'd be fantastic However, what if you try again, you fail, but then you think, well, I'm going to try again, but you fail. You try again, you fail. Um, that's when you get close to, to what's known as the ritualist response, okay? When you just keep on trying to get that goal, uh, but you keep on failing. Um, you don't necessarily act criminally or deviantly, but I don't think those people are very happy, okay? So you, you might not get crime or deviance, but I reckon you probably get some mental health issues there. So that's just me talking you through an example of that I hope never happens of how maybe you could suffer strain and what you might feel um, in order to maybe lead you to turn to a criminal or deviant response. Like I said, I'm hoping none of you would choose crime, but maybe, you know, you'd say, hey, I really want that Mercedes. I failed my exams. I'm not going to uni. I'm not getting a job. I'm going to become the local drug dealer for the area. And that's going to help me supply myself with my material goods like that posh Mercedes. Fingers crossed that's not you. So let's just go through Merton's ideas quickly. Um, so Merton, um, he is a functionalist um, and he's a, an interesting functionalist. He's what we call a neo-functionalist because he's new because his ideas do sound quite similar in places to Marxism, mainly because he recognises that society is not equal slash fair. And now he said that society has what he called an unequal opportunity structure. Okay, some groups are better off than others. Uh, which means that some groups have better opportunities to succeed. And hopefully I've illustrated that with the cartoon image on the right hand side. That's the American dream there. Now, he said, as well as it's been structurally unequal, culturally, we are also all socialized into wanting the goals. OK, and the goals generally are about being materially wealthy. Like the American dream is, you know, the, the, the good job, the nice car, the nice house, the disposable income, the good holidays. OK. Um, but because we've become so obsessed as a society, and I know, I know he wrote about America, but I think many of his ideas have applied to the UK, because we've become so obsessed with kind of the goal of material wealth, um, that actually there's not that much emphasis culturally on the legitimate ways to achieve them. Now, let's face it, the conformist or legitimate way to achieve these goals is to work hard in school. It's to get the good job. It's to work hard over a number of years and get a promotion. That's kind of the legitimate way to be successful materially. But we are literally socialized by the media, um, particularly to really want those material goals now. OK, those things, we want them now. We don't want to have to put in all this extra, extra work. And if we get our opportunities blocked or we failed at any point, we might turn to a delinquent or deviant or criminal response to that. So um, he said this is a huge problem in societies where everyone is socialized to want wealth and the status that comes with it. OK, so quite often you don't want money just to look at it. You want it to buy the stuff that's going to make you feel happy, possibly. But there must be a part of it. So, yeah, I want to have that car. I want to have that outfit because I'm going to look good in it. And other people are going to think, wow, that person looks good. Um, but the issue is, um, so you may well be socialized into wanting these material things, but actually some groups lack the legitimate means of achieving it. OK, so legitimate just means that the legal way of achieving it. And this is due to that unequal opportunity structure. Um, and Merton pointed out that, you know, yes, you're all socialized into valuing meritocracy. And we know that's a big functionalist idea, the belief in meritocracy. But he says, in reality, many don't actually have equal access to the opportunities to reach the goals. OK, so he actually recognizes that there's an unequal playing field going on here. Not, not everyone's starting from the same point to reach those goals. Uh, and he po pointed out that some groups suffer poverty. Some groups are more likely to have a poor education and suffer discrimination, which is going to prevent them accessing those goals in the equal way. And he makes the point that it's mainly minority ethnic groups and the lower classes. OK, so this is what I mean. He does sound a bit Marxist, but he's not. He's a functionalist. So this all creates frustration, tension, anger, like I said, sadness even. And that's strain. OK, when you, you, you've been told you can work hard and get that, but actually you're not able to, you can end up feeling quite angry. And this can lead to what Durkheim's term was, anime. 
Okay, so if someone suffers anomie, they no longer feel part of the collective consciousness, which is the same as the value consensus. They don't feel like they're on the same wavelength as everyone else around them, perhaps. So they might deviate from the value consensus on how to achieve the goals. So instead of like working hard and studying and, you know, trying really hard to do well, you know, they might start a bit of, I don't know, burglary, okay, or theft or robbery, okay. So one of the things I want you guys to think about is what sorts of people are likely to suffer this strain then? And I know Merton's just said a few different groups there. And how is this actually connected to anime? So I'd just like you to think about and maybe annotate onto your notes, like which people do you know? And if you've studied the sociology of education, you will know this. Which people are more likely to fail in education? Okay, generally. I know it's not a uniform rule, but generally, which are the, are the groups that are much more likely to fail in education or do less well? Okay, then I'd like you to have a quick think of which people are the ones more likely to be discriminated against in the workplace, they're more likely to face low pay, which ones are likely to miss out on promotions because of discrimination, um, which people are more likely to occupy low paid jobs, okay, across the country, and finally, which people, which groups particularly, are more likely to be unemployed, okay. Think about which groups am I getting at here with these questions? And you should be able to create a reasonable list, okay? Um, now, all of these individuals, as a result, okay, of missing out on these opportunities, of being unemployed and not having the right jobs or failing in education, they're not going to be able to achieve those material goals that everybody is telling them that they should have. They're, they're seeing their neighbours get them, perhaps. They're seeing family members have them, perhaps, but they're not. So that can lead to an individual becoming really angry and frustrated or upset. And they might feel very disconnected from the normal way to achieve material goals. And this is where anime kicks in. So this is where strain and anime are linked. So they might turn to crime or act in a deviant way. Okay, like I said, the drinking would be deviant. So let me just nip through quickly the different responses to strain according to Merton. And this was in my other lecture as well. Um, you have the conformists. So these are the ones that will, you know, accept the goals, material wealth, and they'll accept the way of achieving that goal, working hard in school, working hard in the workplace, okay? That's the conformist route. You then have the retreatists, okay? They still want the goal of material wealth, okay? But they've completely given up on the means, okay? And they don't believe they're ever gonna achieve it. Okay, so this is when you get people who retreat, okay, they, they isolate themselves, they might turn to drink, or they might turn to drugs, um, um, or hang out with people who have also retreated, okay, from, from mainstream society. Um, and that's when you get what I'd call probably a more deviant response, because that's much more of an individual self-harming way, if you like, heavy drinking. And like I said, drug taking is obviously illegal, but it's much more about a deviant response there. Next, guys, are what's known as the ritualists. Uh, so the ritualist, it's like a ritual. They repeat the same ritual over and over again and they don't achieve the goals. Okay, they don't, they fail every time. So whether it's in education or more likely in the workplace, perhaps they keep going for promotions, they don't get them, they want a pay rise, they don't get them. But they still continue with the routine, the means of trying to achieve those goals because perhaps they want to be respected in their neighbourhood or perhaps that's just what they've been socialised to do. Um, so you're unlikely to see crime or deviance from these people. But like I said, they're probably going to be very unhappy in terms of their mental health. Um, now, the innovators are where it's interesting. And this is probably the one I'd remember above all the other ones, because this is when you're more likely to get the criminal response. So your innovator is someone who wants the goals of material success. OK, perhaps their opportunities have been blocked in some way, uh, but they figured out a way around it. OK, so say, say they failed in education. They might leave education, join a gang, okay, start drug dealing on the street corners and then move up the gang, start controlling areas, maybe move into other areas of criminality and they will achieve material wealth but through an illegal means, okay, so that's an innovator response. And then finally you have your rebels. Now these are the ones that have completely given up on the goal of material success, okay, they are not interested, they don't think that goes for them or they never believe they were going to be materially successful and they behave in a, a deviant and or criminal way, okay, because they, they, they don't believe that the goal was ever for them in the first place, so they act in completely different ways. Okay, uh, so these people might be, well, you can get things from hippie 
communes, if you like, people who live communally, they live, they share all their resources, they don't share the goal of material success. Uh, so therefore, they're not going to be fussed about, you know, working hard at the grindstone in the workplace necessarily. But then you've also got people like um, Paul Willis's boys, for example, they're a good example of rebels. Um, because they formed their counter school culture. Uh, they never thought they were going to achieve well in school, so they didn't bother trying. Um, they gave up on the means of achieving those goals. They never thought they were going to have high paid jobs. They weren't bothered about it. So they never strove for those things. So they're quite a good example of rebels. Okay. Uh, so I just want to make a quick, and I would, I would emphasize this so strongly in class. If you are getting a bit muddled with these, um, please just maybe pick two to remember and make sure one of them is one of the criminal responses. So definitely the innovator, remember that one, and then pick maybe one or two others to remember, okay? Because I would hate to read an essay or a 10 marker where you have listed every single response to strain, okay? That would be boring, that would be list-like, okay? That wouldn't be any analysis. So never list all of the responses in the answer. I'm not interested, the examiners are not interested. Maybe pick two, possibly three, to know really well, have a couple of examples to illustrate the crimes or, or deviance they might be committing, but you would no point would you list every single one of those responses. So don't panic if you can't remember all of them or you get a bit muddled. Apart from obviously when I ask you a question and then you can panic. So let's just try and think about how we can use Merton's theory. Okay. Um, and you may have looked at this study from Tony Sewell um, in the study of education um, because he examined why black boys were failing in schools and he looked at subcultures that were being formed. Now he found that um, black boys were forming three, they were forming three different types of subcultures. Okay. He said there was the conformists, the rebels and the innovators. Okay. Um, so I will give you the answers, but before I do, ha have a pause, okay, and see if you can remember what Tony Sewell said. What behaviours do you think we saw from black boys if they fitted into the conformists, the rebels, or the innovators? So pause it and have a quick go. So, yep, the conformists, uh, these are the black boys who were pro-school work. Uh, they worked really hard. Um, so they accepted the means and they really wanted the success. So they wanted the goal of educational success. And now these black boys were despised by the rebels, the rebel black boys. OK, uh, they were quite often picked on, bullied, you know, given a really hard time by the other black boys in the schools. OK, but they were the conformists. You then have the rebels, which might be the ones that you're a bit more um, familiar with. So these are the ones that form like the anti-school subcultures. OK, so they uh, have given up on, uh, you know, the working hard at school approach. OK, uh, wearing correct uniform, being respectful to teachers, possibly. Uh, so that's the means. Um, and they don't really see educational success for them. OK, that's the goal. They've given up on that goal as well. So they're completely rebels. Uh, they might believe that they have other avenues available to them after they leave school to be successful or they just don't believe they are going to be successful because they look at wider society and see a lot of institutional racism and think well i can't be successful because of my um my my black skin okay and and, and tony still talks about that as a badge of victimhood uh, that i've talked about in a previous lecture um and finally tony still identified the innovators okay so the innovators uh, would have been the black boys or girls, okay? Because I've mentioned Mary Fuller's study here. So she is a good, that's a good study that illustrates the innovator response here. Uh, and they're the ones that were pro-education. So they wanted to be successful, okay? But they were anti-school, okay? So they didn't want to be overtly studying. They didn't want to show their peers that they were trying hard in school mainly because they many of them did view school as somewhat racist okay so like in mary fuller's study the girls didn't want to impress their teacher they, they felt their teacher didn't believe they were going to do well they thought the school was a bit racist in itself so they didn't try hard in front of the teacher for the teacher but they studied privately really hard together those girls and did well purely because of their own efforts outside of the classroom OK, so that's what's known as the innovator response. You can apply Merton's strain theory back to education um, if you and Tony Sewell did that. Sorry, so you can talk about that in an education paper as well. So what I want to look at with you next um, is this institutional anonymy theory, um, Messner and Rosenfield. Now, I'm going to talk to you about this again uh, because I do that every year in class because students get a bit muddled. 
Um, so they were really interested in why America's crime rate was so high compared to other countries. Okay. Sorry, my cat is just wandering past my laptop. Oh, off you go. Now, and they concluded, as did Merton, it's because of how society is structured. Okay. So for them, they said, look, there has been an institutionalized obsession with individual success. And the ultimate goal is literally just to be individually successful. And they said this led to an anomic cultural environment, okay, where anything goes. And that's pretty harmful for society because the individual becomes much more important. The individual interests or material needs are above what's best for society as a whole. Uh, so if you think about it from a functionist point of view, we need people to do all level of jobs. We need people to be poor. We need people to be rich. OK, we need people to do different uh, level jobs and have different levels of income. Um, so they pointed out that economic goals have completely taken over from other goals in all institutions. OK, so, um, for example, even in the family, um, it seems to be more of an obsession about having the right phone, having the right clothes, having the right access to Internet and game consoles and much more of an obsession about you know material goals. Um, and they talk, called this the fetishism of money. OK, uh, and they made the point that, for example, in schools, um, there's a lot of focus now on preparing you to work and earn money, okay, um, at the expense of other values such as sort of respect and tolerance. And you could argue in many schools we're seeing increasingly things like subjects like PSHE and PE, um, religious studies are kind of being squeezed out for the sake of, if you like, high value subjects, maybe like the English maths and science, where, you know, if you do really well in those subjects, you can get a good job and earn good money. Um, but, that there, you know, there is a value to learning about other cultures. There is a value to uh, learning about how to respect one another in society. So if you like, certain materialistic values are being favoured, in, even in education, above other values, they would argue. Um, now, as well as this, um, they make the point, and Merton doesn't make this argument, so this is where they differ from Merton, is that America is particularly bad because of a lack of good welfare provision. OK, um, so in America, particularly, there's very limited housing support, but the big one isn't there's no free health care. So in theory, everybody needs to be economically successful. You, you need to be economically successful. You need a job that pays like your, your health insurance, basically, because if you don't, you could, you could get ill, you could have an accident and you, and you could die from it because you haven't got the right insurance to pay for that care. Like, you know, cancer patients, for example, in America, it's horrendous. If you haven't got the right insurance for the treatment, you can't get it. And that doesn't happen in the UK because we have the NHS. OK, so Messiner and Rosenfield said that's why in America, crime is particularly high. It's about how society is structured, which is exactly what Merton said. It's about the socialization into the obsession with material needs. That's what Merton said. But actually what makes it worse is a lack of the welfare system in America. And they said, when you look at other countries that have good and slash bad welfare provision, you see similar rates of criminality, much higher in countries that have um, bad welfare provision. So, in this, they are functionalists, they're neo-functionalists, okay, and this is a bit of an evaluation here for you, um, but they are different to functionalism because they highlight that society is not actually functional for all equally, and they blame capitalism, okay, they do blame capitalism, despite the fact they're functionalists, not Marxists. So I just want to nip through some of the evaluation points of Merton's and his strain theory. Um, some of you mentioned this was something you were a bit weaker on. OK, um, so firstly, the strengths are, you know, he really develops that idea of anime and he helps us understand how it can lead to crime. OK, and the fact that he identifies that um, certain groups are more likely to suffer strain helps us to understand why statistically most crime is committed by the working class, because they're much more likely to have their opportunities blocked. Um, he also explains why crime rate is much higher in America, because he argues it's a much more materialistic society. And obviously we saw that idea develop further through the institutional anomie theory. Um, 
And what I like about Merton is that even though he's a functionalist, and I always say functionalists have rose tinted glasses on, they see everything as like everything's great and wonderful. He actually recognises that society doesn't function for the benefit of everyone all the time. Okay, so he's he's an interesting neo functionalist because we can use him to criticise mainstream functionalism. Um, and finally, he actually helps us understand why there are different responses to strain. Okay, and why. Say if someone does fail in education, why doesn't everyone turn to drug dealing? Why do we get people do different things? Because he has those several different um, responses to strain. But there are some weaknesses of the Merton strain theory. There is an argument that it's, it's still too deterministic. And not all, for example, working class um, people suffer strain. Some of them are fairly content in low paid jobs. Some of them get a lot of fulfillment from, I don't know, family life, from friends. They they don't suffer strain. They don't sit there and think, oh, I'm so angry with society that I'm not materially successful. They're kind of happy in the way in the, the life that they have. Um, he also ignores the power of the ruling class. This is obviously a Marxist criticism. He ignores the power of the ruling class to create laws that criminalise working class behaviour and not middle class behaviour. Um, and he really does ignore unfair policing. Um, so quite often we find that the working class are far more likely to be heavily policed uh, than the middle class, um, which reinforces the idea that they are more criminal. Um, he also assumes we all share the value of many value consensus. Sorry, we all share a value consensus. And actually, many don't strive for money success. And, you know, when I did that activity at the beginning, like what, what's your shared goals? Maybe you disagreed and said, actually, no, I don't value the car and the material goods and the, and the money for fashion. Maybe you don't. Uh, and finally, he focuses on individuals suffering strain, not groups suffering strain. So be really careful if you get a question on strain theory. Do not write about the subcultural theories that I'll teach you about next next lecture, okay? Because strain theory is very much about individual suffering strain, not group suffering strain. It's not about subcultures, okay? Um, and acting in a deviant way. So in response to some of these evaluation points, we've got some recent strain theories. So this is new content, so you must make sure you get it down. So this, if you like, is a bit of an AO3 um, evaluation of Merton, um, but actually developing strain theory to make it more up to date. So they argue that young people actually have goals other than material success. Uh, and this is obvious, really, because many young people live with parents. So they don't need to be materially wealthy to kind of support their, 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 their I don't know, how they survive. Now, these are the three goals I picked out from the recent strain theories. So you've got autonomy from parents, so a desire to be independent. That's a key goal of young people, wanting their own independence. Um, some of you might relate to these. Uh, popularity among peers is really important. That like perhaps far more important than getting a good job and doing well in school is actually seeing being popular among your peers or like you belong. And this is an interesting one, boys wanting to be treated like real men. Okay, so that kind of like hegemonic masculinity, wanting to be seen like a real man. So I have a think. Um, if a young person fails to achieve these goals, probably late teens-ish, if they fail to achieve these goals, what type of delinquency might you see? Okay, what type of delinquency might you see? So, for example, if a young person wants more independence from their parents, what might you see? If someone fails to be popular among their peers, what might they do to gain popularity? And boys wanting to be treated like real men, so they want to be seen like a real man, what type of behaviour might you see that's criminal or deviant? So get down a couple of ideas, and then I'll talk you through my, my ideas. So I thought, like, you know, autonomy from parents and independence, you might see um, young people you know, smoking um, before they're legally allowed to, underage drinking, uh, sneaking out of the house, um, you know, that that's kind of deviant and somewhat well, criminal if they're drinking and smoking underage, okay, but also deviant behaviour as well. Um, popularity among peers... Um, if a young person wants to be popular among their peers, they might start engaging in <clears throat> sort of like silly behaviour around school, like anti-school behaviour, join an anti-school subculture, try and be the class joker, for example, wear um, inappropriate uniform. 
or it could go into a more criminal response and they might end up uh, joining um, a bit of a gang, okay, um, that, uh, you know, values maybe deviant slash criminal behaviour because they might get a sense of belonging from that gang. Maybe they're quite vulnerable. Um, and we do find with um, some of you might have heard of county lines, many young people that get groomed to join these gangs are ones who are loners, they haven't got many friends um, uh, and feel very socially isolated. And then the boys wanting to be treated like real men. The example I thought about was um, uh, joining um, like a, a Islamic fundamentalist group like ISIS. Um, so that's a very extreme example. But many young boys have felt like they want to go and join those groups because they can hold guns, they can get a wife, they can do what they want. They're not being spoken, talked down to. You know, they, they feel like they can go over um, and and really be valued as a man in that kind of subculture if you like or a less extreme example might be you know if they want to be seen like a real man they might become violent they might act out in that way they might be really abusive towards i don't know girls you know slut shaming them or what have you because they want to reinforce their own masculinity by highlighting their femininity so What's interesting about recent strain theories is it also deals with um, the problem that Merton ignores middle class delinquency. So these goals can explain um, young middle class delinquency as well, because let's face it, those goals are not um, just for working class kids. OK, middle class kids uh, are just as likely to desire independence, popularity and to be seen like real men. OK, so you, you might get slightly different deviance from middle class kids to working class kids. OK. Um, but yeah, deviants or criminal responses. So that's recent strain theories. So one challenge I have for you is to try to apply Merton strain theory to white collar crime. Merton never did this, okay? He kind of ignored crimes of the powerful. So white collar crime is, you know, anyone who wears like maybe a collar and tie to work. So, you know, the businessmen, people who work in offices, banks, uh, huge corporations, um, you know, the management, if you like. So if I said, right, everybody is socialized to desire material success, okay? Including the middle classes, okay? But if they're middle class, they already are materially successful. But I'm trying to say, why might they still suffer strain? Okay, there's a few clues there on the right hand side. I've got a picture of a, a young lady off to a private school there. And I've got um, a pretty big mansion in that picture below. And next to it looks like a slightly smaller mansion. Um, so why might someone who's middle class suffer strain if they live in a slightly smaller mansion compared to their neighbour? Okay, and again, that private school, what's that got to do with them suffering strain? Um, and if they do suffer strain, what types of crimes might they commit? I'm happy for you to Google that. You can have a look at my um, uh, picture at the bottom there, uh, which is obviously a white collar worker. He's wearing, it looks like a suit. It's hiding a bit of money on a, on a tropical island. And I put the word evasion there because that's tax evasion, which is illegal, unlike tax avoidance, which is, if you like, deviant it's frowned upon but it's not illegal and I always I always get those muddled up so it's worth making a note that tax evasion is illegal tax avoidance isn't is not illegal so just to summarize the points that we've gone through in this lecture um, there they are I'm not going to read through them with you so do take a pause and just make sure you've clearly understood those bullet points um, because we'll be moving on to subcultural theories of crime and deviance next thanks for listening guys bye